today we're making mead from the grocery store. This is more of a beginner recipe, but there are some things that you're gonna wanna have, like a fermenter, like hydrometer, um, a turkey baster for taking measurements. These are things that if you don't have them already, I highly suggest getting them if you think you're gonna be getting into the hobby of fermenting. This is mead, which means fermented honey. We're using bread yeast. We wanna make sure that our gravity is low enough that we can work with this rather than against it. So I'm gonna start pouring in my honey. What we wanna do now is get all the rest of that honey out. So I'm just gonna take some water. We have 108 ounces of water exactly, because people always ask, how much water did you put in? We, oh are using the generic Publix, which is the name of our grocery store brand, drinking water. And just by putting some water in here and shaking it up, I'm getting all that excess honey out of this bottle. So another thing that you probably can't find at your grocery store is sanitization liquid. And the one that we use is Star Sand. And that's because everything here has been sanitized in the red butter the red sanitization. Butter sanitization. Butter sanitization. Butter sanitization. Butter sanitization. Now, if you can't find star sand, something that you can find perhaps at your grocery store is baby bottle sanitization yep. solution. And that should work just as well in this particular case. So I'm gonna pour in most of our water. Uh, yeah, what I wanna do is get this mixed in. And it's easy to do when it's only like half full. That seems mixed up pretty good. Now I'm gonna add in the rest of the water and make sure it's fully mixed. Next ingredient is a little bit of flavoring, okay? Some things that we like to add are, I'm using a mandarin orange here. I just want the peel, no pith. So I'm just peeling off the outer rind of this mandarin. Now we did sanitize the peeler and we did sanitize the exterior of our fruit. By the way, this is a lemon and I'm gonna take the peel of this lemon and put it in as well. And now, one of the most contentious ingredients that you can put into a mead. Raisins. Contrary to what a lot of people believe, raisins are not yeast nutrient. They're flavor. And color. And sugar. That's it. I have one ounce of raisins. It's important too that you use sun-made raisins. And there are other brands I'm sure that are fine, but they are not sulfited. They don't have extra sulfites added to them. A lot of your white raisins especially are sulfited, but make sure your raisins don't have that. So we got our flavor ingredients. We got our base honey water mixture. What is missing? Yeast. We need something to make this work. And yet another very contentious ingredient in mead. And I know I'm saying that. It's kind of a joke, but it kind of isn't. Raisins and things like that are common that people have done for a long, long time. I personally like the taste of raisins in a mead. I think it adds a really nice flavor. It rounds it out nicely. But before we add this, let's go ahead and take our gravity reading. All right, so let's see. 1.084. Now, what that means is we have 1.084 original gravity, and I can tell you what the potential alcohol of that is. There's a couple ways to do it. One of them is right here on the hydrometer. If I go to the 1.084 mark and just spin it around, that's somewhere in the 11% or so ABV range. Back to the Fleischmann's yeast. This is Fleischmann's active dry yeast. It is a bread yeast. It is a baking yeast. It is commonly used for that. All yeast that, well, not all, most yeast used for fermentation of wine, mead, cider, and beer is Saccharomyces cerevisiae. They're all the same species of yeast, but they're different strains. Each strain does something slightly different. They all produce roughly the same amount of CO2 and ethanol. That's the funny part, because they're still a yeast. Wine yeast will probably do a better job of this. However, Bread yeast does a fine job, and because our local grocery store didn't have wine yeast, I'm using bread yeast. So at this stage, what do we need to do? I did take notes on all of this, and I suggest that anybody who's brewing takes notes. There we go. Now, what should this look like while it's fermenting? This is kind of important. This can take up to three days before it actually starts up. What's happening during that time is the yeast are getting a little busy with each other. They're getting to know their friends. They are building a colony, okay? They're actually splitting because that, they don't actually do anything like that, but whatever. They're, they're building up the colony. They're dividing and conquering. Then they're going to start converting that sugar into 
gas, and alcohol. So you may see things going up and down. You may see a lot of bubbles coming up the sides. Your airlock should start showing activity. There if it, might be foam. Right. If you do not see airlock activity, it could be because your seal isn't good, but look for the telltale little bubbles coming up the side. If you see tiny bubbles coming up the sides, it's fermenting. Don't even worry about it. The airlock is a great security measure, but the seals on these are not always perfect and it's okay. If you see really odd looking things, black hairy growths, dump it out. Just dump it out, walk away. Don't, don't even try to save it. You're not going to. Um, things that smell really, really bad, like make you wretch when you smell it, that's bad too. Dump it out. Don't even try. I know it's expensive to try this, but if those things happen, they can harm you. If you're experiencing something and you are unsure, please ask in the Absolutely. comments before you dump. Right. Brian is checking the comments all the time. For now though, we're gonna go put this in our fermentation station and we will see you once it starts to slow down. Um, okay, so this is two weeks old at this point. Airlock activity had pretty much stopped. It doesn't hurt to let it sit a little longer. First thing you wanna do is do an olfactory and optical examination. In other words, you wanna smell it and look at it. All looks good to me. It smells wonderful and it looks really good. A lot of the uh, raisins puffed up and they float and the skins float and all that. It's totally fine. It, as long as everything stays moist, you don't really have a worry. They will leach out some of their color, so there'll be a slightly paler hue. That is completely normal as well. Right, things that you wanna watch out for, it's very rare, but it could happen, is if you see actual mold, like a white fuzzy, blue fuzzy, black hairy things, uh, yeah, just uh, dump it out and start again. But bleach everything if you do that. <laughs> Just bleach all of it and then sanitize so that, yeah. Looking like 0 0.994. Uh, it's between 992 and 994. Let's do a little quick calculation here. Find out how much alcohol we created. And to do that, we use the formula in parentheses, OG minus FG times 135. Now, it's important to do the in parentheses part first, because if you don't, you're going to get a weird number. It's an order so, of operations thing. Yes. I'm going to take our OG, which is 1.084, minus our FG, which is 0 0.994. That means we went through 0 0.090 points of specific gravity times 135 gives us 12.15. I'm going to call it 12%. Because it went under 1.000, more than likely it is done. Yeah. Comma, however. You never actually know until you leave it for a week and check again. Right. Put it back in your fermentation area. And we'll see you in a week. It's been nine days. Let's see if it's still fermenting or if it's done at 0.994. My vote is on done. But you never know. Yeah, it's 0 0.994. So it's time to rack. No, you don't want to just pour this through like cheesecloth or a filter or something. Very, very simple. We use an auto siphon, which basically just creates the siphon effect. It has a cap on the bottom that that way you can put it into the lees and it won't suck it all up. Okay, so after racking, we're pretty good. Not too much headspace in there. And as you can see, all that's really left is stuff that you probably wouldn't want to drink anyway. What's the next thing we got to do? We need to put an airlock on this. First, we got to get this out of my way. Even though this is done, we still want to put an airlock on it because it is degassing. I wrote on my note that I racked it. It's 0.994. We're going to put it back on, sit it back in the fermentation station for a week, maybe two weeks. All right, so we racked this about a week ago. It's time to rack it again and do our final sweetening adjustments, whatever needs to be done. Why are we racking this again? To get rid of any extra lees, anything that's floating in there that we don't want. Yeah. This is what's left after racking there's always going to be a little bit of waste. This is like maybe an ounce and a half or two ounces. So what we wanna do is give it a little bit of a taste. And if you notice the glass, anyway, um, so I just wanna pour off a sample. So this stage, we are looking to perfect our beverage. Just so you're aware, there is a multitude of things that you can do here. My uh, initial assessment is that there's plenty of acids and tannins in there. I'm getting a, lo a lovely mouthfeel and a lovely acidic punch in there. Yeah, it doesn't even taste as dry as it could. I'm getting some honey notes in, in the forefront, but I'm not getting much in the after. So I feel like sweetening this with honey is gonna help push the honey notes more forward, making this more of what my mind wants to call a mead 
flavor profile. I am going to put some of this Costco honey in here. And this is just a wildflower honey, so it's very similar to what we used initially. Oh yeah. How much? That is very much experience based. If you like dry, you may actually like this the way it is, a little age on this, this is going to be a very fine mead. We both like things sweet. I do not like dry white wines and I do not like dry plain meads. So I'm trying about maybe a little over a half pound of honey in this. And then after you make your additions, you make, want to make sure that you mix it thoroughly. It's an improvement, but I think it needs a lot more. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of really nice flavors happening in this. And I want to bring those forward, but I also, I also want more honey character and I want a lot more sweetness. That's the bottle. <laughs> I can't help it. My, I'm sure my microphone's picking it up though. Well, there's lovely noise There's too. a fourth wall break for you right there. <laughs> I'm still getting the bitter orange coming through, but I'm appreciating this more. This is very nice. 1.030. So we added pretty much a pound of honey. Now we're going to pasteurize this. And by pasteurize, what I mean is we're going to put this into a narrow mouth fermenter. It's going to have an airlock on it. It's going to go into a pot of water with our immersion circulator at 140 degrees Fahrenheit. And once the internal temperature reaches 140 degrees Fahrenheit, it will sit at that temperature for a about 20 minutes. And for that time, I'll take it out, set it out to cool, and we'll let that sit for a week or two. We'll be back to show you what it looks like. Six for clarity. And as we've said multiple times before, it's not gonna change clarity is more of an aesthetics thing. It's really not going to change the flavor so much. So that's appearance. On the smell. It smells like a mead. Smells like a mead. Get a little bit of the citrus. I get a little bit of the raisiny notes. Not it doesn't smell like a raisin, no. okay? So if you don't like raisins, don't think you shouldn't use them. It smells like a deep fruit is what it is. This has a lovely smell though. I'm getting oh, the yeah. sweetness of the honey, lots of honey character. It smells very rich. Mooded. It doesn't smell, okay. It doesn't smell thin. If you're new to mead and you've never really had mead before, this is gonna be a good introduction yeah. because yeah. it's on the sweeter side. It's a little more approachable. It's still reading definitely honey, but it's honey plus. Yeah. And I made my yummy noise because I really enjoy this. Um, now that it's sat in my mouth for a while, I do sense a little bit of the youth, um, but not objectively so. No. This is just over four weeks, by the way. Yeah. This is four weeks and three days old. To taste this good at this age is impressive. And the fact that it came from grocery store ingredients, bread yeast. I mean, realistically, this is, this is quite nice. Mm -hmm. When I think of mead, this is what I'm thinking of. So when I want a mug of mead, this is what I'm going to reach for. It just needs a little extra time, and I think this is going to be pretty spectacular. Now, I want to say something else, too. At this point, if you wanted to, you could put spices in here and let them sit in there for a while and change the flavor. You could put this on fruit and let that add to those flavors. You could oak this. Your options are still pretty open. You could keg this and carbonate it that way. Because of the way we did things, you can't actually naturally carbonate it anymore but you could keg carbonate it. So the options are still there. This is just the beginning point. But yeah. to me, this is also a finished product. So for now, we're just gonna go ahead and bottle this. I'm gonna link in the description our bottling video. So that way, if you wanna get a refresher course on how I bottle, there you go. As always guys, thank you so much for watching and have a great day. Bye-bye.